uh, talking about hashtag, that number sign, we have to understand what it is. So that's something that I wanted to talk about today. So uh, any line that has a number sign in front of it, it's not a C command. It has nothing to do with C language. It is actually you talking to the compiler of C language, asking the compiler to do something before compilation. Got it? So the hashtags that you see over there, it's a conversation between you and the compiler asking the compiler to perform certain tasks before compilation begins. The very first line that you see that define statement, ignore it. That's something that you're going to learn in OOP 345. We're not going to talk about it now, but I'll tell you exactly what define is. Let's talk about include first. Just to tell you when I mean, when I'm telling you that it's a uh, um, really something that you ask the compiler to do before uh, doing anything. I'm just going to add over here a new item. And it's going to be a file. And I'm going to call that file he ha dot hu -u. OK? Good. That's a file. I just added it. Ta-da! Now I'm going to come over here, randomly delete half of the code. and paste it right over here. Save of half of the program is there, half of the program is here, right? Is this a valid C program for you now? No. In here, I'm going to say include he ha dot hu hu. OK? OK? Now, I'm going to go to the project and completely remove this. Remove. So it's removed from the project but it is on the hard drive, OK? So if I actually look at the hard drive over here, you will see that he ha hu hu is right there beside prog.c. Are we OK? Now, I am telling to the compiler, include he ha dot hu hu before you compile this code. What does it mean? Literally go, f open the file, he ha hu hu, whatever it is, copy the context, context and paste it here. And if I compile and run this beautiful program of mine, you will see that it works perfectly. Ta-da! So include, there's no magic, there's no act. If you sh like it's literally you're asking the compiler before compilation, go pick up the file and paste it in here. That's what that include is. So when you put less than and greater than around it, what does it mean? It means get it from the special directory of your compiler. That less than and greater than, there is a directory inside your, inside uh, the Visual Studio compiler or any compiler. It has, for each compiler, it has a specific place. So I'll go to root of C, program files, Visual Studio, Visual C, Include. There you go. Here's all the .h files that you include, people. Okay? So all the files that you see over here, these are the files that you include over there. And write include whatever. And it includes it from here. So what is double code? Double code means right here. Don't go to the special library directory that we have. Get it from the current directory. Include is include. It's just the difference between the paths. Okay? So that's what it is. So again, when hashtag is encountered, your compiler tries to find out what I want to do. And that's what it does. So that's include. What include is? It's because you're too lazy to type the whole standard input output in the code. You ask the compiler to do it for you before you start. OK? Do we understand what it is now? So we know what include is. now. I'm just going to I'm just going to Oh, let's 
let's name, change the name of this one to uh, 0, 1, he, ha, who, who, the, si. Okay, so that's the main for that he, ha, who, who, thingy. And now I have to take this code back. Um, let's do something. So, what is defined? What is really defined? Have you ever had this case happening to you that you write a text and you're referring to somebody called John? John the stitch, John the stat, you're going through the whole thing, then you tell yourself, that's not John, it's actually a she, it's, a, it's Jane, okay? So you've got to see, oops, I made a mistake. What do you do? You do a search for all the he's, and you change them to she, and then you change, you look for all the John's, and you change them with Jane, search and replace. You've done this, right? You've done, especially when you copy your assignment from your friend, and then you want to give it to the prof, you want to go change all the stuff quickly, that's what you do, search and replace, right? So everybody's like, going to some place old in memory. But anyways, so that's the thing. It's search and replace. That's what a defined statement is. Define literally. I'm not trying to make a metaphor in here. It's not a, I'm not. It's literally searching for something and replace it with something else. For example, actually let's do something in here. Oh, that's not my keyboard. All right. So you see this while over here? You see the while over here? I'm going to say over here, define loop with while. And I'm going to write over here, loop. And in here, I'm going to say loop. What did I do? I said, compiler, please look at my source code. Any place you see loop, take the loops out and put a while instead. So essentially, I changed. Like, If you looked at this, you would think that I changed the language. I didn't. I'm just asking the compiler to take the loops out and put a, put a, uh, a while instead before you compile. And if I run this program, you'll see it works perfectly. So if I actually run the program, go step by step, you'll see it actually comes over here and does all these stuff, how long you want the line to be, and scanf, and all those things. And in here, I'm going to say 10, and I'm going to hit. So it works exactly as if loop is actually a command in here. It's not. It's replaced with while. That's why it's working. Are we OK with this? It's just a search and replace. Now, let me stop it. Now, if I, instead of while, I put over here, well, what's going to happen? When I compile this program, control F5, it's going to give me an error, right? And look at the error message. It says, Und will undefined assuming extern returning int. Look at this. And look where it shows. If you look at the, if you look at the message, it says will undefined. You see that? But you look at that line, there is no will. Why? Because in your source code there is not. But when the compiler is compiling, it's replaced with that will thingy. That's why the error message is on will. That's why the fine statement is, statement is very tricky. You have to use it with caution. Because even the error, and now, now you see the defined statement up there. Just imagine you had 500,000 lines of code, and it shows you the error message over there, and you see it says loop, and you, the error message over there says W-H-I-L. What the heck is going on? I don't have, the compiler is crazy. Compiler is not crazy. You just ask the compiler to replace something, and because when it compiles, that loop doesn't exist anymore, that's what you get the error message for. Another thing, <laughs> uh, 
So int a, 3, int b, 4, OK? Int c. In here, I'm going to say define sum to a plus b. Are we OK with this? Now I'm going to say c is set to sum. Say 2 multiplied by sum. In here, I'm going to say printf percent d. And in here, I'm going to say this is the value of c. And I'm going to display c. Now, what is the output of the following program? That's, that's by the way, this is a question in your test one. Shoot, stupid compiler. OK. All right. That's a new version of printf called printf. Printf, OK. All right. So what's the output of this program? Yes. 14? Anyone is OK with 14? First, you use your immediate judgment and you said 14. Now put your programmer's hat on and debug. What is debugging? Let me explain what is debugging. Debugging is to put yourself in the shoes of the compiler and compile and run the code. What, does it, what did I tell you? I said computer is a dumb thing, right? To be able to walk through a code, you should be dumb as a doorknob, which means turn off your intelligence and do the thing exactly as it says so you can correct your mistake like y10. There is no brackets. So sum over there, the way it looks like, it looks like sum of a plus b. But all the compiler does, it goes through the code, replaces all the sums with a plus b. So the result of that thing before compilation will be 2 multiplied by a and then plus b because multiplication uh, has higher priority than, than, than addition, right? Ta-da! Careful. OK, define when you're using define. Use it with caution. Usually, for now, what we use the define for? We use the define for, for things that we may change later on in compilation. And we don't want to go through our code and do it 50 times. In your lab, it's called, is it say it, call it nums? What? Yeah. Nums. So because later on, they want to ask you the loop to, instead of three to do four, they're gonna, they'll tell you, do define nums three. So later on, you can go change that to four, and your code works. Because automatically, it searches and replaces everything with a new value. Hence, everything's beautiful. Yes. Math doesn't do that, my friend. You don't know your math properly. Math always does multiplication first. It, uh, yeah, it, exactly like math. So it's still, it's so if I put the 2 after, it's essentially will be 2 multiplied by 4, then plus 3, which is, yeah. All right? Are we OK? All right. So this is actually a good bug. You just saw a bug, OK? One of the worst types, are actually. <laughs> Because something that you look at, it, see, everything looks OK. Why the heck is going on? And that's what's going on. Are we OK with this? So let's, let's keep that in mind that uh, I'm going to say over here, not 14, but 10 is the answer. Since sum is replaced with a plus b before compilation. Compilation. Are we OK with this? Questions? Suggestions? Objections? All right. So that's that. We are almost on track. So this one is uh, 0, 2. Define dot C. Let me just run it, make sure. Oh, too late. Mm, save. 
All right, uh, what else I wanted to talk about? Give me two seconds, let me take a look at my cheat sheet. We talked about loops and we said what the loops are. Loops are essentially, a loop is essentially an if statement that instead of just doing the block after the condition once, it will keep doing the block after the condition while the condition is true, okay? That's what a repetition is. And, and we've talked about it, so I'm just going to give you an example for it. So if I have over here something like integer a set to 0, I can say over here while a is less than 10. So let's do this. I'm going to say if a is less than 10, in here I'm going to say uh, printf percent %d, and I'll go to new line, and I'm going to print a, and I'm going to say a++. plus plus. Now in here I'm going to say printf uh, goodbye. So if I write this program, what happens? What is the output of this program? Yes. Headphones. Headphones. So for those people who are listening to this at home, somebody left the, left the headphone and is now getting it. All right. <laughs> All right. All right. Because just imagine halfway through a lecture, headphones. All right. <laughs> All right. And not a please, not a, <laughs> excuse me, headphones. All right. So, uh, that's, that's, that's new, and uh, no, anyway, so, so uh, uh, if I run this program, what's going to happen? A is 0, now I'm saying if A is less than 10, do that, so what's going to happen? It's going to actually, let's have a printf after the thing, so, so in here I'm going to say A, A value, printf value of a after the whatever percent d percent d and let's put a column in here and that's a and no line Okay, so what is the output of this code? A is 0, then it comes to the condition, is A less than 10, 0 less than 10, yes, it comes in, prints 0 because A is 0, correct? Then it adds 1 to A, A becomes 1. The condition is true, then it comes to line 10, prints the value of A after the block or whatever it is, it's 1 because A was just added by 1, correct? And then it says goodbye. Now, the only difference between a while loop and a for loop, so if I run this, this is what we get, right? Inner value of A, <laughs> outer value of A. just to make this sense, make sense. So, again, one more time. We run this, this is what happens. Inner value, zero, outer value, one, it says goodbye, and we're done. Are we okay with this? Now, the only difference is that if I change this if to while, the contents of the block after the command keeps repeating while this condition is true. No difference, it's exactly like an if statement, but keeps repeating. And if that condition never goes false, then you're going to have a, 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 an endless loop in your hand, where it never stops. That's called, your program is hung. That's what they say, oh, it's pro computer hanged, that's what it is. You have an endless loop that it never gets out. So if I run this beautiful program of mine, 
this is what happens. Inner value of A is 0, 1, 2, so it keeps adding. Spirits, the condition is true, keeps going back up, 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 until A becomes, becomes 10. When it becomes 10, it comes over here and checks the value. It goes false, checks the condition, it goes false, comes out. So, whenever you have a condition in a loop, remember, you are saying A less than 10. A cannot be 10 inside the loop. It's impossible. Because if it is less than, if it is equal to 10, then the condition is false, and that's against the rules, right? That's why you have inner value from 0 to 9, and the outer value is 10. So when it goes out, outside of the body of the while loop, then the value is 10. Why it's 10? If it wasn't 10, it would have been still uh, stay inside, right? It became 10, that is, that's why it's out. Are we okay with this? Are we okay? Are we okay one? Are we okay two? Sold. Now, in C language, everything begins with zero. It's not that you have to, but get used to it. Anybody wants to count from the beginning and keep going, they start from zero. It's our habit. I could have started that thing from one and go A less than or equal to 10 to go from 1 to 10 if I wanted to. But if they want, usually the index of anything, the index of anything starts with 0. So if you have a loop and you want to have a loop index, why they call it an index? Because if uh, it, it actually uh, labels the number of repetitions. So repetition 0, repetition 1, repetition 2, repetition 3, and keeps going like that. If you want to show the row number inside a loop using the index that starts from 0, obviously you can simply say row and do a percent D and add 1 to the index, A plus 1. So when you do that, you can actually see the row for all those people. What happened? Cancel. So, you, so all those people who cannot count from 0 will understand row 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay? So that's row 1, the value of A is 0. Row 10, value of A is 9. And our value of A is 10. Are we okay with this? Are we okay 1? Are we okay 2? That's that. All right? And what else I wanted to do? Oh, something extremely important, actually. Yeah, let's put an, a value of A is this thing. So that's that one. Now, 0, 3, loop, loops, index, and row. Dot C. Now, please, please pay attention to what I'm going to talk about right now. You see these lines? What's happening to the A if you want to explain what happens in this loop in English? What would we say? A set to 0 happens once before the loop, correct? Every single time before the body of the loop, the condition A less than 10 will be assessed, checked. If it's correct, the loop is going to happen, right? So the condition A less than 10 happens many times and every single time before the body of the loop, correct? And A++ happens every single time at the very end of the loop. Is that correct? Do we understand this? We just talked about the definition of a for loop. That's if you are too lazy to do this, you go to McDonald's and say, I want combo number three, because you're just too lazy to say, I want a burger and fries and a Coke. You say, combo number three. So that's a for loop. If you are too lazy to write this, literally, 
I am not saying that in like literally what you see is this four that's the new version of four four a set to zero a less than ten a plus plus and then printf that's what's make the for loop a little weird because all these three statements are written in front of the for right but they are actually in three different lines the a set to zero happens once before the for loop a less than 10 is examined every single time at the beginning of the loop and a plus plus happens at the very end of the loop here literally those two things are the same that's why the a plus plus that you see if you write over there plus plus a or a plus plus it doesn't make any difference the rule of plus plus that i told you plus plus happens after the statement if it comes after the variable then we say plus plus a happens before remember that that rule doesn't apply to for loop because for loop is a weird thing because you just don't want to write the things in the top and the bottom you write it at the same place and that's exactly what it means and what's your question Uh, nothing it just does it by itself yeah when you when you go to new line it does it it formats it okay for all those people I'm gonna talk I'm gonna tell it after this let me just write it down over here style while coding very important thing that I have to talk about all right so that's a for loop and that's what that's what I told you I mean like that's why I say you don't need to know for loop because it's confusing I don't want to talk about it now if you understand what a loop is do it the way you like if you understand how a while loop works use it if you like to do the for loop be my guest but you don't need it it's absolutely not needed let's understand how repetition work how to do the logic thingy and then get involved in how to do the same thing in five different ways let me learn how to do it first, then I'm going to, you know, are we okay with this? The reason that I'm telling you this, this is exactly like dancing. You cannot learn salsa, merengue, and I don't know, bachata at the same time. It's impossible. You have to learn one of them, and then you go to the next. Uh, they're all dancing, different ways of doing the same thing, right? It's the same, same thing. Please don't, don't get involved into how, how do I do it in that way? It's not important now. Just learn how to do it properly. Those things come naturally after. So that's a for loop. And if I run this program, you'll see that uh, in its identical. If I do a printf over here, you'll see that everything happens exactly the same way twice. See? Exactly the same way. No difference. <coughs> Are you okay? Um, and do while is a completely different thing uh, that you saw. Do while is like a while loop. We've, we've done it in, a qui in, in our quiz. If the condition goes false, it's very possible that while never happens, right? The content inside the while loop may never happen. If you want the content of a loop to happen at least once, you can do it with a while loop too. Make sure the condition is correct the first time it's coming in. But if for some reason you don't want to do that, you can do a do while. What do while does, it takes the condition and puts it at the end. That's all. So the only difference between a do while and a while loop is that, so if I actually write a do while in here like this, if I do a do while, so this, this condition in a while comes right at, The while and the condition comes right at the end. They come right at the end, and a do comes at the beginning. Okay, so this do while is exactly like this while statement. The only difference is that this will happen once. It's impossible for it to never happen. So if you want something to happen first and then keep happening after, that's your friend. You can still do it with the first one. It doesn't make any difference. Just make sure the condition is correct. Set the things up. Initialize variables in a way so it happens for the first time. So do while 
not needed either. OK? It's just I have, to, because of the workshop, I have to put this ease on you. Don't try to li learn the same thing doing it in five different ways. Uh, but anyways, I'll put it in here. So uh, save this one as 04 dash 4 for while while and do while dot c all right any questions about what we have done last time <clears throat> all right so i'm going to pause the recording in case something comes up that i need to add to the recording and then I'll talk about the lab.